All right, you've done well if you've been holding on so far. As you can you can see what I mean now by why this is like the Tour de France is long, but it is also it also has these these tough conceptual climbs you have to get through. Uh, we're not done yet. We have the final section to do, the final part. Part C says, use the product of these six routes to deduce that cos pi on 12, um, cos 5 pi on 12 equals a quarter. Hmm. Where does this come from? Okay, now um, there are two final pieces of the puzzle that we need um, to have in our minds in order to solve this particular question. Um, and the first one has to do with what they say right at the beginning, right? It's use the product of these six roots. So they're trying to call to mind our understanding of polynomials from earlier in the year, particularly our understandings of roots and coefficients. Now, because it's probably been a while since you've looked at these, uh, I'm gonna try and refresh your memory. Um, we noticed that there was, for any polynomial equation, we started off with like quadratics and stuff like that because it was easy, there was a relationship between um, the roots and the coefficients, even if you didn't know what the roots were. Um, for example, if you wanted to find out um, what would happen if you added the roots of a quadratic equation, um, you could work that out by just going straight to the coefficients of said quadratic and just evaluating minus b on a. Right, um, and there's a couple of ways to prove that. You could prove it using the quadratic formula or by completing a square um, or quadratic identities, bunch of different ways, but this is a result that we showed, right? If by contrast, and with, um, with quadratics, we would call it the product of roots. If you wanted to know what happens when you multiplied your roots, even when you don't know what the roots are, you can just go straight to the coefficients and you would take C on A, provided you had um, you know, your quadratic written in this form. Now within the extension one course, what we do is we uh, expand on that result. This is what's true for quadratics, but actually these results, which are also called Viette's results, because um, that was the name of the mathematician who kind of codified all this for us. These results um, that relate roots and their coefficients generalize for polynomials. They're true for all polynomials of any degree. So if you, for example, went from a quadratic to a cubic, um, if you still had these, um, coefficients in like descending order for your powers of x, then you could say minus b on a is still equal to something with the roots. It's um, gonna be three roots though, so it'll be alpha plus beta plus gamma, right? And then when you went to the next, uh, next coefficient over, um, you got uh, the alpha plus beta, alpha, uh, sorry, alpha times beta, alpha times gamma, and then beta times gamma, right? Now for this reason, um, I think there is a more helpful way to say what we're talking about here rather than sum and product. Sum and product is kind of, um, it, it makes more sense when you're talking about quadratics like this. Um, but the way I think about it is that these are actually all sums of roots. It's just that we take different amounts of roots at the same time. So this is the sum, this first column here is the sum of the roots one at a time. Uh, you can see here, you just take, uh, here's one root, here's the other, here's one root, and then another, and then another. Uh, I'm doing them individually. When you have a look over at the next column, this one, it's still the sum of roots, but instead of doing them one at a time, I'm doing them two at a time. Uh, I'm pairing them, and I'm getting every possible pairing that I can. Now, for a quadratic, because there's only two, there's only one pair. Um, but when you go to um, a cubic, there are three roots, so you can pair them up in three different ways. When you go to the next one, um, when you've got a delta, you've got even more combinations. Um, and when you have a look, this, this sort of helps us to explain what's going on when you go to the next result, right? Um, alpha, beta, gamma is the result of dating them three at a time, right? And of course, we just go over to the next coefficient. In this case, it would be D over here. And the signs, you might recall, they flip um, minus, uh, sorry, plus, minus, plus, what I did it backwards, minus plus, minus, and then plus, minus, plus, etc. Now, the reason why I highlight that that sign flipping back and forth is important to us is because I don't have a quadratic or a cubic in this question. I have got a polynomial of degree six, right? So I'm gonna need to go not just to minus B on A, C on A, or minus D on A. To get the product of the roots six at a time, I'm gonna have to go several steps over, right? If I want them four, not four, not five, but six at a time, um, I'm just gonna follow this pattern. So you can see it's gonna go negative, positive, negative. The next one will be positive, and then it'll be E over A. Then it'll be back to negative, minus F over A, and then G over 
A because a um, polynomial of degree six will have those um, seven coefficients, A, B, D, C, D, E, F, G, okay? Now, this is the result that I'm interested in. It's the product of these six roots all in one hit. So I need to look carefully at what G and A are actually equal to. Now, when you have a look at the polynomial that's been provided to us, the coefficient attached to the um, highest power in your polynomial, that's, that's A. You have to be careful though, because what you're doing to get to B, it's the next power down, but there is no X to the power of five term in this polynomial. So in this case, B would be zero. Um, the next one you're gonna get is C, that would be negative 48. Um, you skip D because um, or you don't skip D, but D is equal to zero because there is no X cubed term. And so you can see, I'm gonna go A, C, and then E, and then G is the last one. It's going to be um, this negative one right on the end here, okay? So um, that was my revision of polynomial roots and coefficients. Let's bring that back to the question that I'm interested in. I can say for a sixth degree polynomial, um, I'm going to quote this one of Viette's results. I'm going to say um, the product of the roots, uh, which in this case, I actually know what the roots are. They're um, cos pi and 12, cos three pi and 12, and so on, right? Um, I'm, so I'm gonna write that cos pi on 12, cos three pi on 12. Um, this time I'm gonna write them all, you'll see why in a second. Cos seven pi on 12, cos 9 pi on 12, and then lastly cos 11 pi on 12. So this is my sum of roots six at a time. They're all there. What's that equal to? It's G over A, which in this case we just said, um, there's G, uh, and I should have highlighted A as well. A is 32, okay? So I'm gonna get on the right-hand side of my equation, uh, minus one, that's G, over 32, that's A. Okay, now, <laughs> There was a lot to get there, but um, I now have, you know, I've, I've solved one problem and I've created another one, right? Um, I have this relationship that includes cos pi on 12 and cos 5 pi on 12, and there they are, right there and there. Except I also have all this other fluff flying around, right? You're kind of like, uh, what am I supposed to do with, no, I'll stay with this color. Um, what am I supposed to do with this cos 3 pi on 12? That, that doesn't appear in, in this result here. Um, for that matter, what am I supposed to do with everything trailing on the end? Cos 7 pi on 12, cos 9 pi on 12, cos 11 pi on 12. None of them appear in this equation. So somehow I'm obviously gonna to have to get rid of them. Um, and it's probably helpful that I know I'm supposed to get rid of them because when you have a look at the right-hand side, um, it's not equal to what I want either, right? It's minus one on 32. I'm supposed to get a quarter and I'm supposed to be positive, right? So how do I deal with this? Okay, again, another conceptual chunk that you need to call your mind back to. We've already used trigonometric identities in this question earlier on uh, in part one. We had to use the Pythagorean identity um, a number of times like this. Uh, when you have a look at what we've got here, I'm gonna need to pull on another trigonometric identity, but I don't have any sine squareds I need to get rid of. I have a whole bunch of cosines I need to get rid of. Which trigonometric identity that we have access to will help me get rid of a product, because they're all multiplied, right? Um, a product of different cosines. Well, if you are struggling to remember, luckily for you, we have a reference sheet. Uh, and if you have a look to the page that has all the trigonometric identities on it, page two, you will see there are a couple of candidates, but one that is better than the others. Um, but there's a couple of candidates here for getting rid of or, or re sort of um, rephrasing um, cosines when you've got a multiple a multiple set of them and they're all multiplied together. Okay, um, you can see here there is cos a plus b. It's got cos a cos b sort of tucked inside it, right? That's the product of two cosines. That looks promising, right? But you can go one better if you scroll further down. You can see um, right here, you've got cos A cos B, which is exactly what you want. No sine A, sine B coming along for the ride. And it's in, term of, in the terms of um, other cosines here on the right-hand side, okay? So what I can do is I can use that identity, cos A cos B equals half of, um, there's a sum and a difference of different angles in there. I can use this result. In fact, I've already sort of grabbed it, so I'm going to insert it right now. It should be here. 
I can use this result um, in order to simplify this, this garbled mess, um, so long as I can choose appropriate values for A and for B. Um, because, because this identity is true for, for any A, any angle A and any angle B, but I don't just have random angles, I have, I have specific ones, okay? So, I want you to think about this, right? In fact, um, if you are at this point and you're like, oh, I wonder what to do next, I would encourage you to pause the video after I give you this instruction and see if you can work this out yourself. I need to choose my A and my B appropriately, and I have four angles to choose from, right? I've got 3 pi and 12, 7 pi and 12, 9 pi and 12, and 11 pi and 12. I've got to get rid of them. But there are many ways to pair up these four angles, and not all of them are equally useful. So I want you to have a think for a moment about, pause the video and think, what might be the most useful pairings of these angles? Um, try some pairings and see, do they end up with something useful or do they end up with something where you're like, oh, well that's no help, it doesn't get me any closer to the answer, right? Pause the video, have a think. And for now, if you are either, you know, content to just plow through or if you've gone away and come back and like, I think I have an answer, right? Let me guide you through my thought process of how this works, right? Cos 3 pi and 12, right? If I have a look at this one, which is the best angle to pair it with? Well, if I don't know any better, let's just try any random angle, right? Suppose I just pair it with the next one. 3 pi and 12, 7 pi and 12. If I paired them together and I said, um, I'm going to say cos 3 pi and 12 here, cos 7 pi and 12 here, what do I get on the right hand side? Well, um, if you do um, the difference here, um, let's just do bigger takeaway small, that's easier. You get 7 pi on 12 take away 3 pi on 12. 7 pi on 12 take away 3 pi on 12. That's um, 4 pi on 12, which I can simplify to pi on 3. Now that's promising because cos of pi on 3, that's what I would get from here, that's an exact value. I can evaluate that um, and that will help me get rid of these sort of pesky terms, right? So that's good. But then when you turn to the other part of this trigonometric identity, cos of a plus b, you're gonna have to not just subtract, you're gonna have to add these angles. So you can see here, you run into a problem, right? 3 pi on 12 plus 7 pi on 12. Um, 10 pi on 12, that's 5 pi on 6. You can't get an exact value for this, but surely there are some easier ones that I can go to, okay? Um, so you can do this any way you like, but I'm gonna suggest, instead of pairing up those, I'm gonna go, 3 pi on 12 and 9 pi on 12, I think that's gonna be easy to deal with. And then I'm also gonna pair up 7 pi on 12 with 11 pi on 12. Um, I wanna emphasize, you can do this either way, um, but I think you'll find that the numbers are gonna be much more um, easy on you if you pair it up this way. So, for starters, let's get the part that I'm actually interested in in the end, the pi on 12 and the 5 pi on 12. Uh, let's get it out the front uh, and then let's see what happens when I pair these particular angles up. I've got cos of 3 pi on 12, cos of 9 pi on 12, and then I'm going to have uh, cos of what I pair up? 7 pi on 12 and 11 pi on 12. All of that is equal to uh, minus or negative one over 32. Let's get everything over on the, this side so it's parallel. Okay, so like I said, you can pair these up in a variety of different ways, but I wanna make it the easiest possible. All right, here we go. So, I've got uh, this cos pi on 12, 5 pi on 12 out the front. I know that's not going to um, change because um, it's going to, uh, I'll leave that over there. It's gonna be part of the result that I'm aiming for, right? So it's gonna be there in the end, so I'll leave that. And then when I have a look at the next part, cos of 3 pi and 12, cos 9 pi and 12, using this identity here, I can write it as half outside of, okay, let's do the difference. So again, I'm gonna do a subtraction. 9 pi and 12 minus 3 pi and 12 is 6 pi and 12, which is pi on 2. So I'm gonna get, that was a really messy bracket, I'm gonna get cos pi on 2 out the front. And then when I add them, and this is where it was much more helpful, um, rather than something awkward like you know, 5 pi on, um, on 6, which you can do, but um, I want something simpler. Um, can you see that when you do 3 pi on 12 plus 9 pi on 12, when you go to the sum, you get 12 pi on 12, which is just pi. Isn't that nice? That is a much easier angle to deal with. Then when I go to this uh, final one over here, something very similar happens because um, the difference is gonna be 4 pi on 12. We saw that already, it's pi on 3. 
And then when you do the sum, um, you're actually getting, uh, you know, something uh, relatively simple. You've got 9 plus 11, that's going to be 18. 18 pi on 12 is 3 pi on 2. And all of that is equal to negative 1 on 32. We're on the home stretch because we can finally evaluate some stuff that will make this easier. Um, I'm going to get my chosen results out the front here. And then what have I got? I've got a half cos pi on 2. We saw this earlier. This is a root. So that's just going to be 0. Uh, cos of pi, if I know my graph well, is negative 1. And then bringing up the rear here, I've got a half of cos pi on 3, uh, cos of 60 degrees, you might recognize that as a half, and then cos 3 pi on 2, um, again, just like cos pi on 2, that's a root. So I'm going to say that's plus 0. Um, and again, that is all equal, whoopsie daisy, um, that is all equal to negative 1 on 32. Almost there. Um, I, one last, oh, no, not one last time, in fact, that's a lie. Uh, I'm going to copy this cos pi and 12, cos 5 pi and 12 out the front. Half times negative uh, 1 is going to be negative a half. Um, then you're getting half times a half, that's positive a quarter. That's all equal to minus 1 on 32. And you can see here, in order to get these all on the right hand side, what's the easiest thing to multiply? It's going to be negative 8. So I'm getting uh, this is the second last time, that's going to be uh, negative of negative 8 on 32, and this is truly the last time, uh, cos pi on 12, cos 5 pi on 12 equals, um, the negatives cancel, 8 over 32 is a quarter as required, and you can breathe a sigh of relief. So. Uh, what can we learn from this question? Well, um, first let's have a look at part C, which we just did, and then we'll look at the overall thing. Um, this question here, it's very unassuming, it's very brief, but you can see we had to bring in some fairly major, major conceptual um, you know, skills. You have to go all the way back to your understanding of roots and coefficients in a fairly unusual power, power of six, to do that, um, to get to this line. And then when we got to that line, um, you had another hurdle to cross, which was you had to use this less common trigonometric identity um, to be able to reframe this. And then as well, you wanted to pair up these angles in a, in a helpful way to make your work easier rather than harder. So uh, that, that brings you to the end of the question. And when you look at the beginning of it, right, um, these parts here are really just leading to this result. Um, it's quite bizarre, actually, that when you think of cos pi and 12 and cos 5 pi and 12, um, if you went to um, a calculator, and when you went to evaluate these particular things, um, let me just make sure I'm in radians. I am. I think that's where it defaults anyway. If you were to put in cos, where's it gone? Cos of pi on 12. And then when you were to look at, oopsie daisy, cos of 5 pi on 12, you look at that and you think, my goodness, like what sort of weird decimal rubbish is going on here? But you can see that if I actually uh, take these two things together and if I actually multiply them um, to confirm, scroll all the way there, this result that I've got here, to me it's quite astonishing that you can take these very bizarre um, results, which are in fact um, just messy looking surds, um, and if you in fact multiply them together, sure enough, whoopsie daisy, if you put a pie in the right spot, you do get a quarter, um, this marvelously simple, rational result, um, no surds to be seen. So. Hope you found that helpful. Um, I know there is a lot to take in in this question and that is why it's scaffolded in this way. Uh, hopefully one of the lessons you take out of this is how important it is to know some early results like your binomial coefficients and your trigonometric identities and your, your polynomials as well um, because they all cohere very well together. That's one of the things that will characterize your final exams. Once you know everything, we can combine them in challenging and unusual ways.